Hey, I'm Danny Smile, Chef Ale Bremner here in Montreal. It's minus 246 degrees. My ear is gonna fall off. Oh. We are on Dante Street, which is the hub of Little Italy, the hub of Italians in Montreal. It's changed a lot over the years, but one place that's going nowhere is Quincaillerie Dante, and we're gonna go see Elena Faita, who is the godmother of cooking in Montreal, a role model to a lot of young chefs. When I see people in a tomato sauce putting a pepper, Danny, it shouldn't be. And we're gonna go make her famous creamy rabbit with polenta, a northern Italian dish. Perfect for weather this time of year. Warm up the soul, because it's fucking cold today. La Festa di San Giuseppe is coming up on March 19th. Italians celebrate the patron saint of workers and the protector of family. Obviously, he's honored with food, and traditionally, we eat zeppole, also known as zeps, on that day. So we'll drop by and get a few for Elena at the Lati Caserta, grab a rabbit, and we'll be cooking in no time. Uh, how are you? We uh, came to pick up the famous uh, Zeppoli. Okay, the St. Joseph's uh, Zeppoli, sure. Just an excuse to eat uh, pastries. And uh, we're getting the original recipe for Elena because uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to start off on a bad foot. That's for sure. We'll get her a little lamb too. Okay. The Lamb of God with the, the flag. So we have our gifts for Elena. We're going to go to Milano. We're going to get the rabbit. My dad's been bringing me there ever since I was a kid. I don't know what to say. If you live in Montreal and you haven't been here, you're sleeping. What I love about Milano is like it hasn't changed since the 80s. You know, you walk in and it looks the same and it's always, you know, it's always going to be the same. It's a special place and that's what I love about it. It brings great memories, you know. My favorite thing was when I was a kid, just come in here like stone and just read all the names of the pastas, I don't know. Gluten-free corn pasta. What the fuck is that? Do you imagine? Andres, hey, how are you? not bad. You? Good, good, good. Thank you? I have some special instructions from Elena, from sure, Dante. Sure. She wanted to cook a Milano rabbit. Look at this. That's perfect. Look at this. There you go. So we're out here, downtown Little Italy, boulevard of broken Italian dreams. Everything is closing down on this street. A lot of gentrification. I don't know if it's a good thing. It's kind of like a bit deserted these days, so. It's kind of weird, you know? It's not like how we grew up. I don't know if it's because I was a kid, but I remember it being like, you know, really busy. It's just kind of sad to see a lot of old school businesses just closing for good, you know? And some places are surviving, so that's what's really cool about the neighborhood. You still have like the mix of new spots that are opening up on the side streets and like, you know, classic establishments that have been open since the 50s. Hey, Elena, Danny. how, are, how you? are you? Not bad, okay, you? you? I'm ready to go to school. I don't know about that. I'm ready to go to school. I remember being a young kid just walking around here. It's just the, it's it's the best. We started Little Italy. We've been here for Beautiful. a long time. Yeah. And your generation is coming, yeah. the Italian young yeah. generation. Yes, we need to keep that tradition alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I first met Elena when I was starting into cooking school. She gave me a couple of, uh, you know, tips when I was 17, 18, when I went there to buy a knife, and then uh, we just kind of kept in touch ever since. Puis mettez de l'ail, je veux dire frais, coupé, fin, fin, fin. I'm taking a big chef next door because I'm not a chef. I'm a, I cook. I'm a cook, but I do like to teach. I teach people the traditional cooking. Amazing. So why don't we go and cook now? Let's go. Ah. Let's go. All right. Are so you ready? I'm scared, actually. Why? I'm scared. You shouldn't be scared. I'm with the master of Italian ben, cooking no, ben, over no. here. This is for you. Just a little uh, thank ah, you for having me. This is Zeppole di San Giuseppe. And Ooh. you know, we found a nice little lamb over here with the oh, Italian flag. Nice. And I got you the original recipe with ricotta, right? Good. Told you. <laughs> Today, Elena wanted to teach me how to make her creamy rabbit and polenta. It's her famous recipe. It's authentic. It just reminds me of like how my grandparents used to cook and my mom as well. We share that common dish. It's pretty special. We have cream and we have butter. You have a lot of herbs here. You have la salvia and rosemary. You have brandy and you have white wine. And what makes it good too in this recipe is la pancetta. Amazing. And that's it. That's all we need. It's an easy dish, but the rabbit is tricky because you can make it hard also. If you By put too much it. overcooking it, it has to come off the bones. 
because we're going to serve it with a bit of polenta. Amazing. So we're going to cut the rabbit in eight. We're going to show you how to debone. I well, just how to butcher the rabbit. You take away the fat, all this fat here. Well, I just cracked it like this, and you have where and around the, the bone. And that's how you got to yeah, debone. Yeah, and then you cut you it down. here. Okay, you cut, and this cuts in two. Cuts in two. And this is a very good part, this here. Perfect. You cut. Look at that. There's another one. This one too. And now we have this, which is the best for me. You have the salt here. You have sea salt with uh, sage and rosemary, okay? She has this like thing that she whipped out from the bottom of her cupboard, which is like this smoke salt, like she almost didn't show me the label, some secret Elena Faida trick up her sleeve. Look at that. I don't pepper. I'm not a pepper person. When I see people in a tomato sauce putting a pepper, I mean, it's Danny. It shouldn't be. You have basil there. It shouldn't be. Guys, stop putting pepper yes. in your tomato sauces. Yes. What's going on? Yes. What's wrong with you guys? I never thought Elena would be just so against black pepper. Just the fuck that was that came out of nowhere. Holy! All my shit. students know. Yeah, they oh, know. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And this is rosemary. Look at that. Nice and rosemary. This sage. is sage. So here we have a pancetta cut and diced. You don't make the perfect dice, it's okay. It's not an excuse. There's no <laughs> excuse not cooking. And then you put pieces of butter. I'm already salivating. This is gonna roast. And you have the sugar at the end of the, when, when the rabbit is roasted. And then you finish off your recipe. Uh, I'd say for a good hour, hour and a half at 375. And you have to look at it, eh? Uncovered, we're gonna- Uncovered, I don't want it to cover. If it covers, it kind of has this it moisture. It has the water, the moisture, water. and that's that's where you miss your recipe. And that's it. It's the pepper idea here. I hate when that you're in a restaurant and the server, he, he comes, he says, you want some pepper? Do you ever see that in Italy? You're going to kill me. I asked for pepperoncino, hot peppers, yes. for my cacio pepe. Oh. I almost got kicked out of the restaurant. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> we want it all in America. That's what it is. We want it all. <laughs> she has a great knowledge, you know, of uh, Italian cuisine, which is like regional cuisine, and she'll like specify, you know, every dish. It's funny because a lot of people are changing what your grandparents did, what your parents did. It's coming back. It's all coming back. Thank God to you guys that things are changing today yeah. because before it was Italian American. Yeah. And now it's going away and coming the real Italian way of cooking. It's gonna push people to buy locally. Local. And what? what's the time? When it's time of le chou, we're gonna eat the chou. When it's time of the potatoes, we're gonna eat potatoes. Yeah. Because everything is so expensive. Yeah, we don't need, uh, we don't need Californian strawberries no. in January. No, no. So for the polenta, it's extremely simple. What you need is 750 milliliters of thick cut polenta, and then we'll need about three liters of water. You're gonna freehand it? Three. No, this is a six. That's... So now it's three. There we go. I'm not the numbers guy, you know, at uh, my restaurant. What's nice about polenta is that you could have it in so many different it's textures. Wins. Yeah. And textures. And textures, yeah. you have it creamy. But also ways. And ways, yeah. Yeah. Except for uh, all those uh, restaurants that do polenta fries. Yeah. Water's boiling. Okay. <laughs> okay? All right, perfect. We have to salt it, right? Yeah, and this pepper. Salt and pepper in the water? No. No, no, okay, okay. No pepper. It's gonna make me die. <laughs> Elena, why do you think uh, you have like a mind of a chef? You know what I mean? No, I don't. No, you have no, no recipe. I, I, I don't call my chef a, a chef. I'm, I'm a... I love cooking, it's my passion. What is the definition of a chef? It's passion, well-organized, a person, a leader. a leader. He has to work with others. And you gotta know how to cook to put two and two together. But a lot of the young ones, 
thing out of, they come out of school. And they're chefs. And they're chefs. Yeah. When they're not, they're yeah. still with diapers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all you culinary students. Uh, let, we're going to come and change your diaper, okay? No, we'll come and change no, your diapers. No, you got to work a lot of hours. That's what it is. Anything good thing, you got to work a lot of hours. And that's what I say. So now for the polenta. You have to let it come down like a rain, right? Burning yourself with polenta is very dangerous. And always risk, because or you're going to get uh, the lumps. lumps. Yeah, yeah. You gotta let it cook. And that's where patience comes yes, in cooking. Yes, that's right. And you just have to stir. I put too much salt, eh? Did you? No. I love it, I love it. I love it. This is, this the, is traditional the traditional way of doing Of polenta. serving polenta. Oh I'll burn God. my hands for you, that's not a problem. Okay, go. It's the least I could do. Voila. Okay. Perfect. Get it out of there. there you go. Look at that. And that's it. So look, look at that. that. Look at that. Ooh, it's almost burning, you see? Yeah, you but can it's smell not. It. Okay? We're gonna cover it with aluminum paper. We lowered the oven. The oven is at 200 now. And here we have what's gonna make the recipe is all this here. Okay? Okay? So we put back inside. So once the rabbit's cooked, you deglaze with brandy, deglaze with white wine. Uh, now it's a flambe. Now it's like it's even more impressive. Then we could add our white wine. Wine. Beautiful. And then we'll put the cream in it. It's half a cup. And look, look at, at that. that. Look at this. We Go. pour all this. Yeah, on top of the rabbit. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. This is okay. perfect. Okay. I have a lot of good recipes. Yeah, you're, you're full of recipes. Everybody's <laughs> waiting for the cookbook. Oh, they'll, they'll wait a long time. Right? There we go. There we have yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to go with the classic. Mmm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, the taste is insane. It's excellent. It's delicious. My grandma used to cook a lot with rabbit, so it's good. It brings me back. The, the polenta with it, it's excellent. One of the best polentas I've ever had. And it's three ingredients. Wine, huh? Here, Danny. Thank you. Cheers to St. Joseph. To Saint Your Joseph. name is not Joseph. Is that? <laughs> but it's okay. To St. Joseph, to Italy, to the old country. Yeah. To all the beauties. Yeah. To our parents that brought us here. To our parents that took the wrong boat and ended up in Montreal <laughs> because it's minus no, 286. They didn't take the wrong boat. <laughs> no, they Look took... what they did to us. Yeah. What we brought here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Thank cheers. you. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Spending time with Elena, even eating and just sharing food that you know that you know we cooked together was really special. You know, it was really fun. Elena, thanks for inspiring me for all these years and keeping me humble and but you have always to, uh, you're being a amazing. Person. You're the best. Thank you're, you so you're much. You're not one of those chefs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs>